Hi guys, I'm Richard, I'm the Director of Digital Foundry and today we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of you have been asking about, which is specifically how do you measure frame rate on console games? After all, you don't have anything like fraps. An important part of the process of creating these videos is to produce lossless dumps of the HDMI port of the console. So what that involves is using a very expensive capture card and recording 1080p 60 frames per second in a lossless format and that lossless format is actually really important. So we've got a bunch of clips here and I'll show you just one of them. Uh, this is Metal Gear on Xbox One running on uh, Windows Media Player. Basically, you know, perfect quality capture and that's what we need to make sure that we get absolute accuracy in our results. Let's quit out from that and load up our frame rate analysis tool. It's called FPS GUI for now. Uh, it's been in development basically since about 2009, 2008. The first game we actually analysed was Grand Theft Auto 4 back in the day, but we didn't have anything like the advanced tools that we have now. We could literally just count the amount of frames that were unique in any given capture, and from there it's simple maths to get a basic frame rate. But these days, things are a lot more complicated. So let's import a clip, have a look at Destiny on the PlayStation 4. So we've already pre-analyzed these clips and uh, we're going to load them up. And here you can see that we're in our editor. Let's talk through that. This is where we define how the final video is gonna look. So you can see on the right here that we have a whole bunch of parameters. None of this is actually to do with frame rate analysis at all. It's literally about how the screen looks, what fonts we use, the nature of the grid, uh, where the frame rate counter is, that sort of thing. And you can see here straight away, we've got a bit of a problem in that Destiny is a 30 FPS game and we've got a frame rate range here of 20 to 60. So we can change that very, very easily by going to the grid area of the, of the setup and just changing the bottom range from naught and top range to 60. There you can see that it kind of looks a bit too cramped, so we'll change that again so it's naught to 40. There we are, that's how we, how we basically set things up. We can change the frame times as well, that's up here under the consistency. So at the moment we measure between 10 to 60. Now Destiny locked 30 FPS, uh, 1000 divided by 30, 33 milliseconds. So it's never gonna go above 30. And so we can just change that for example to 50 and then you'll see that the frame time line goes down. Uh, you can see here at the top left that the frame rate counter is kind of intruding on the HUD. So that can look a bit ugly in the final video, but that's no problem at all in the FPS text area we can simply move the location, well, let's try 1750. Yeah, that's pretty good. And there basically, that's it. That's the revised look of the screen. There's all manner of different uh, setups that we've got available, but I've kept it just to four simple ones for this demonstration. Let's talk about doing a uh, cross-platform comparison. Now we've got the equivalent Destiny clips here and we're gonna import them just by dragging them in. So now we've got the Destiny Xbox One analysis imported, but obviously uh, we've got the wrong profile. So we change that immediately to a split screen. Now you can see here in Destiny, the frame time drops here. They're very, very similar on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Let's go and dive a little deeper into the sort of tools that we've got behind the scenes. So we have here a, um, like an editor section. And in the editor section, it gives us uh, various statistics. You know, frame rates, the draw time, which is the frame time basically, uh, whether there's any torn frames, and uh, we've got some interesting viewing options here, which are now allow us to basically uh, double check what we're seeing here. The whole principle of frame rate analysis is basically counting unique frames. And an important task in that obviously is to find the duplicates. And sometimes it's not entirely obvious. Okay, so one of the tools that we have is the heat map. And basically this compares this frame with the last frame. And on a pixel to pixel level, the more different it is to the previous frame, the brighter it is. So you can see here that we have a pretty bright frame and then we have a totally black one. Now the black one shows that there's no difference in the frame at all. And in a 30 FPS game, typically you'd want a unique frame, a duplicate frame, a unique frame and a duplicate frame. So we should see a bright frame and then a totally black one. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Okay, and here's another example of a 30 FPS game on the current gen platform. So Batman, 
Arkham Knight. So we're going to import first of all the PlayStation 4 version and there it is and then we're going to import the Xbox One. You'll also see here that we've got our first indication of screen tear and how we represent it in the tool. And essentially, well, we've got two ways of showing that. So if we skip ahead to a frame that's actually tearing, you can see that we've got uh, the two red lines there, which indicate where the tear was programmatically found by the algorithm. And on the bottom here, we also have a kind of indication of where on screen the tear is and also how persistent it is. As clever as the algorithm is in finding the tears and working out the frame rate, it's still essentially an algorithm and sometimes algorithms can get it wrong. So we do actually check by eye most of the videos that we produce to make sure that they are entirely accurate. And we've got a number of tools to do that. So let's dig into the video tab here. This is where we actually check that things are working properly. We have here heat difference back. So this actually allows us to see exactly where the torn frames are cropping up. So what's going on here? This frame is compared to the one before and where there's duplicate data, it's completely black. And where there's new data, where there's a new frame, that's where we have uh, this kind of very bizarre colorful image. And we also have another tool here, Absolute Difference Back. And that's pretty straightforward. Rather than being a kind of a graduated color, depending on how different the pixel is, it's totally binary. If it's different, it's white. If it's not different, it's black. And you can kind of see that right there. So in rare occasions, we kind of need to check that the tearing is being scanned correctly and that the locations are kind of right. And this is the tool that we use to do it. It just ensures accuracy. Right, so another important tool we have to make sure that our analysis is correct is frame time. And that's that little graph here that you'll see on the left. Now you can see here in Batman, we're dropping frames and the frame times are kind of moving all over the place. So frame time is a really important tool for us because it visualizes how long each frame is actually on screen. That's important from a gameplay perspective because it visualizes judder and kind of hitching within games. And in a frame rate, that's kind of averaged out across a second. Frame time puts you in the second. You actually see how long each individual frame is on screen. And you can see here that PlayStation 4 is sort of wobbling around 33 milliseconds and there's a kind of big dip here and it's pretty much the same but a bit worse on Xbox One. But crucially frame time also kind of allows us to see where the analysis might be incorrect and then we can actually go back into the editor and there are various ways that we can correct things manually to make sure the analysis is completely accurate. Okay so we've talked about tearing and how it impacts a 30 FPS title like Batman Arkham Knight but let's talk about 60 FPS because things get quite a lot more complicated then. So I'm going to import a clip. Um, this is GT5 on the PlayStation 3. Look at the frame time and you can see that while the frame rate is quite variable, here we're at 52 FPS, uh, the frame time isn't really that much variable at all. It's, you know, pretty much still remaining in the sort of uh, 20 millisecond area. So if we actually constrict the frame time down to say 40, yeah, you can still see it's well under uh, 25, probably in the 20 region. Okay, so why is that important? Well, if we were using VSync here, then the frame time wouldn't be consistent at all. It would be all over the place. You would be going from 16 to 33 milliseconds at each point. But here, where we're using adaptive VSync, where we have the tearing, what we're actually seeing is a fairly consistent uh, level of uh, frame delivery. And what that translates into is a very smooth response, much smoother than you would get if we were running with VSync. So Polyphony Digital have basically made a trade here. They've sacrificed image integrity. I mean, the tearing's pretty self-evident. But what you get in return is a kind of smoother response from the controls and for a driving simulation, that's actually really important. So 60 FPS games with tearing present in a very different way. Uh, as you can see here on the heat difference back, or indeed the absolute difference back, it presents as a kind of thin black bar that moves up and down the screen. I'm actually sort of scanning forward and backward here. And it's actually the size of the bar that informs us as to how much of the last frame is on screen. And from there, we can calculate how far behind the 60 FPS refresh it actually is. Okay, so there's three phases to any particular analysis. We basically capture the footage losslessly, and this can produce some colossal file sizes. I mean, literally anything up to 150 megabytes per second. And then that data is fed into FPS GUI. And from there, the algorithm takes over. It gives us a kind of baseline outlook of how the game is looking. 
And from there, we double check it by eye. And uh, it can be a tortuous process, but it makes sure that we get an absolutely tight analysis. Okay, so the third phase, very simple. We're happy with our analysis. We're happy with the way it's being previewed on screen. Let's export it. File, export AVI. Uh, we've got video compression here. We can choose how we want to compress the video. Simple, same with the audio. We've got a couple of other functions here. A lot of them don't really work anymore, but this one does, half FPS. Back in the day, YouTube only supported 30 FPS video, so there was no need to export the full 60. But these days, regardless of the game, we export the full 60. So we untick, untick that. And then name it, save, and away we go. Okay, so that's how we measure console frame rates. Uh, no fraps, tools, or anything like that for us. We have to do it the hard way. And I hope it gave you some sort of insight into how we work behind the scenes. But that's all we've got for now. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.